Okay, hello. In this video, I'm going to present our novel concept of the general projection maps in order to allow a visual exploration of the complete space of projections for multidimensional data sets. So, let us start by thinking about how useful a projection-based analysis of data can be. In 1936, the grammar world theorem has been established, assuming an n-dimensional data set M, then the convergent of their multivariate random numbers can be explained by the convergent of the amount of univariate random numbers, meaning that the amount of projections perfectly explains the properties of a high-dimensional data set. Thus, the grammar world theorem tells us that we can and should consider projections in the data analysis process. So, let's take a look to such projections. Regarding this, a popular approach for the visual data analysis are multivariate projections from n-dimensional data spaces to a two-dimensional visualization space. Let's consider a high-dimensional data set given over an n-dimensional data space. Each axis of it is associated with a 2D anchor point representation within the visualization space. A data point M is then projected onto a point P in the visualization space by using a matrix multiplication with the matrix A. Please note that the anchor points themselves build up the projection matrix A and thus the anchor point of a visualization of it, meaning that changing the anchor points is equivalent to changing the matrix A and the complete projection respectively. Well, this matrix A is a two-time n-dimensional projection matrix introducing an affine projection known as Kandogan's star coordinates. A common approach for them is to explore the space of projections by interactively changing the anchor points and thus the projection, based on a mostly radial initial projection scheme. A different concept to appropriately project data has been established by Hoffman and colleagues named radial visualizations. Here, at first a data point is considered to be in the anchor's point sum. Then the projected point P is supposed to be connected by springs with its anchor points where each spring is parameterized by the components of its data point M, which each anchor point represents. Following the Hooke's law, this introduces a force field which is here blue colored. The more blue, the larger the total spring force is. The final position of P is where the total force vanishes. By considering the point P, the data point M, and the field of spring forces, the condition that the force had get to down to zero can be of course described analytically given the closed form here on the right side. It ends up that the projected point P is also given by applying our known projection matrix A based on the known anchor points but weighted by the reciprocal sum of its data records components. And that makes a difference since the weights introduce nonlinearities in the projection. So even star coordinates and radial visualization seems to be almost equal at first, they are not. Let me switch this by comparison both. So first, the radial visualizations are a projective projection which maps straight lines to straight lines and preserves the cross ratio of four collinear points. Thus they introduce a nonlinear distortion. In detail that means that a hypersphere in the data is mapped onto an ellipse in the visualization space and that the aspect ratio of this ellipse changes if the original data position changes. So this distortion might mislead the analyst in moment. For instance, both circles have the same size here in the data but not in the projection. In contrast, these star coordinates are in a fin map, meaning that the aspect ratio of the lines is preserved. Thus, these star coordinates map a hypersphere in the data also to an ellipse in the visualization space. But the ratio of this ellipse remains constant under an affine transformation of the data, and thus the distortion is not that confusing to the user. For instance, 
for circles you have the same size in the data and in the projection too. Moreover, these dark coordinates allow to enforce certain properties to the projection matrix A in order to facilitate orthographic projections named orthographic star coordinates. An orthographic projection projects a hypersphere of the data onto a circle with the same radius in the visualization space, which minimizes distortion even under interaction. So the circles have the same size and preserve their circular shape as well. On the other hand, the projection space is not restricted for star coordinates, which enforces the user to apply zooming and panning operations in the visualization space to preserve the patterns completely. This can be an issue, especially in dealing with extreme outliers. For the radial visualizations apply that the projected points always are placed within the convex hull of the anchor points, which eases the recognition of pattern in principle and outliers in detail. In addition, both approaches suffer from overplotting, meaning that the data points which are different in the data space might be mapped to the same position in the visualization space, which further misleads the visualization search. A comprehensive issue is caused by the fact that a projection is a low dimensional embedding and thus it is not projecting, especially under interaction. Overplotting effects might essentially occur. So, in order to maximize the advantages and minimize the shortcomings from both worlds, we establish our general projective map, which unifies affine and projective projections in one scheme. With this, in the first step, we consider this depiction of a general projection scheme given in homogeneous coordinates. Here, the projection matrix A is the same two term and dimensional projection matrix as before, represented by its anchor points. The end coefficient C introduces a new degree of freedom. Since each anchor point is associated with one coefficient, they are visualized as small triangles along an axis where the center is equal to the value 0 and the anchor point is equal to the value 1. We will focus on these projective coefficients in a minute in more detail. The row vector here Especially the term 1 minus the sum over the C's divided by n prevents the later division by 0. This way, our projection scheme is smooth and has no discontinuities. Homogeneous version of the data point M is then multiplied with this matrix, which gives a homogeneous solution. The final projected point P is given by the converting the homogeneous solution back in normal space. The degree of freedom in the CAs named projective coefficients controls the projective behavior of our projection scheme. Remember, Although the anchor points are a kind of degree of freedom, thus it is per se not an advantage to the user having even more degree of freedom with the projection coefficient. Consequently, we automatically steer in the following this projective coefficient in order to define three useful applications. At first, we introduce a smooth blending between star coordinates and radial visualization to have the advantages of both approaches available on demand. Second, we define an interactive magic lens concept in order to handle overplotting effects. Lastly, we define a distortion minimization concept for an anchor point based visual search. So, let's start with an approach for a smooth blending between star coordinates and radial visualization. For this, we consider the vector of the projective coefficients as to be equal to a single parameter t. And if we choose t is equal to 0, we get the star coordinate projection. If we choose t is equal to 1, we get the radial visualization projection. By interactively changing t by the user, we can plan between both approaches. Here, we see the planning for the Avalon data set, which has nine dimensions and thousands of records. So please note, that this blending is not equivalent to a simple zooming in the visualization space where the relative positions of the projection points would be preserved. Instead, the relative position changes by our smooth blending, which allows to reveal novel data inside. 
to stress that we see here in the active whistle search where the user interacts with both the anchor points and the smooth plumb then. This way we can, as early introduced, minimize distortion and disclose outliers in the data on demand by exploring the space of affine and projective projections. The advantage of the radial visualizations and the star coordinates can be used by our general projective maps in one scheme. All right, let's move on to the second application, the magic lens. The magic lens is a class of techniques where additional information or certain distortion are introduced in the visualization to get more insight. The magic lens is set by a center PC, a radius R, and it lens S. Usually, a magic lens is often used as polyfocal lens in order to emulate a magnifying glass in the visualization space. We want to go one step further, meaning we want the data itself to be involved. Clearly, we want to modify our projective coefficient C based on the original data set such that we have a magnifying effect within a certain region for our related projective points. Interestingly, to modify the projective coefficient C results in a moving of a point P along the line through P and the origin, meaning that this is equivalent to a scaling A of point P. Thus, we construct now a scaling function for our magic lens. First, we consider the intersection points K1, K2 between this line and our magic lens. Then we define our scaling fun function A by F divided by the Euclidean lens of a point. F is a polynomial of degree 5, which fulfills a set of conditions based on the interaction points K1 and K2 and the parameters of the magic lens. Here you can see how the magnifying function f looks like for different parameters. By having the scaling function a available, which assigns to each point an appropriate scaling factor, we are looking for the projection coefficient c that minimizes the differences between our projection points p and the scaled versions. This gives a quadratic minimization issue and the solution of it is that the projection coefficients are given by an inverse matrix M1 multiplied by a vector Y1, which is based on the scaled projective points. Note that the matrix M1 depends only on the data set and thus it can be pre-computed. Therefore, our magic lens concept performs well. This can be seen in the following examples. Our data-dependent projective lens dissolves over plotting and reveals here for the five-dimensional iris dataset three compact clusters, while for the traditional image space-based polyfocal lens the clusters remain hidden. For the ten-dimensional yeast dataset, our projective magic lens disclosed two global non-compact clusters in the data. Again, the traditional polyfocal lens cannot reveal these structures. Finally, also in the 32-dimensional WDBC dataset, at least two global non-compact clusters can be found with the aid of our projective magic lens by choosing the projective coefficients carefully. On the other hand side, with the image space-based polyfocal lens, that structures cannot be visually found by the user. Thus, involving the data into the concept of magic lens overplotting can be reduced and the interactive visual search can be strongly enhanced. Now, let us take a look to the last application. The minimization of the distortion effect by choosing appropriate projective coefficients. Regarding this, the distance between two data points should be preserved under projection. In practice, this is often not the case. Thus, we are now looking for the projective coefficient c that the distortion in the projection is minimized, which is a nonlinear issue, unfortunately. So, in order to do so, remember that changing the coefficient c is equivalent with a scaling of a projection point p by a scaling factor a. Thus, in the first step, we compute the vector of scalings A, which minimize the distortion. Then, 
In the second step, we choose the projective coefficient c, such that the scaling a can be reconstructed best. In order to find the scalings which minimize the distortion best, we urge that these scalings are quite similar and most mutually equal. Then it applies with the intercept theorem that the distance between two scaled points is equal to the distance of the original points multiplied with the half sum of the scaling factors we are looking for. This distance should be equal to the distance of the related data point giving the first term to be minimized. The second term which should be minimized comes from the constraint that the scaling factors should be similar to each other. So, both terms together shape up our goal function to be minimized in order to find the scaling factors A which reduces distortions. This goal function is a quadratic minimization issue, which gives for the scaling factors A the solution over the inverse matrix M2 based on the matrices G and E that decipher the distances in the data and in the projection space as well. In the second step, we choose the projective coefficient C such that scaling A can be reconstructed best. Okay, that's easy. Since we have already done it before by our magic lens, so, we grab this solution again and insert our distortion minimizing scaling factors A into this known equation to get finally the distortion minimizing a projective coefficient C. Well, having that said, our distortion minimization nevertheless comes with two issues. First, matrix M2 introduces two user parameters, alpha and beta, which have to be chosen anyhow. And second, the calculation of the inverse matrix of M2 is expensive, since it depends on the distance matrix of the projective points. In order to treat the user parameters, we fix alpha and vary beta for a set of benchmark datasets, since only the ratio between alpha and beta influences the distortion minimization issue. It turns out that the distortion pattern is just weak related to the choice of alpha and beta. Nonetheless, choice of beta equal 2.1 and alpha equal 2.5 gave the best results within our tests. In order to treat the performance issues with matrix M2, we need to subsampling the considered data set. For this, we use a uniform data sampling where gamma describes the used portion of the data. So for instance, gamma is equal to 0.1 equates to 10% of the data, equal to 0.2 equates to 20% of the data, and so on. Here we can see how the computation time for M2 is related to gamma. Actually, the computation time grows quadratically with gamma. So we are interested in keeping gamma as small as possible. And regarding this, our tests show that the distance distortion error for our benchmark data is still similar if gamma is chosen to be 0.1, meaning that to use about 10% of the data reveals quite similar distortion minimization results. All right, enough numbers and math. Let's take a look to some examples. For Here we see our distortion minimization under interaction compared with radial visualization star coordinates and the orthographic star coordinates for the iris data. For the traditional star coordinates and radial visualizations, we see that blind anchor points and dimensions occur, meaning that some projected structures are not influenced by them, and thus relations between patterns remain unclear. In the general projective map-based distortion minimization interaction, all projective patterns are mutually interlinked and participate in each situation in an interaction. Structure-related interlinking facilitates to investigate relations between the patterns such as relative size in the data or compactness ability. Here we see the same comparison for the 10-dimensional yeast data. Since spatially separated data move and scale differently in our distortion-based interaction process, Two different structures in the data can be revealed there, even though the structures are overlapped in the projection. We name this structure-related scaling. In the remaining projection approaches, the different structures cannot be seen. Finally, 
we see the comparison for the 32-dimensional WDBC dataset. Again, the structure-related interlinking and structure-related scaling give additional data insight. Moreover, in comparison to the orthographic star coordinates, in our distortion minimization approach, only the axes move at the same time, which further reduce confusing to the user. All right. So let me conclude. Our general projective map, in order to unify fiend projections and projective projections, are introduced here. So therefore, another degree of freedom with the projective coefficients are used, which allows three applications at least. The smooth blending between radial visualizations and star coordinates to support the outlier detection, a mobile and data-related magic lens concept to overcome all plotting effects, and to disclose hidden structure information and the distortion minimization interaction scheme in order to minimize distortion effects. Our techniques enables a good starting point into a projection-related visual data analysis. Far that's all about it. Thank you for watching this video.